Uh, chapter 1A deals with basic introduction to computers. So the basic components of a computer are memory unit, central processing unit, which is the arithmetic logic uh, calculations done in that unit, and control as well. Then you have got input-output unit. And the, the memory unit can be divided into two. One is the program memory, other one is data memory. And uh, we'll just look at that further in, in detail, uh, the type of memories and what sort of information that they hold. So let's look at the input-output unit. So input-output accepts data from outside world through the input-output unit to the computer. Computer process the data based on what you have written in the program here, and then send out the results to the out, through the output unit. It could be a printer, it could be a um, driver, CD, uh, read, write driver. So it will be just controlling that through the input-output unit. Then you look at the memory unit. There are two types of memory unit. One is the volatile memory. Volatile memory means when you turn off the power, it loses its information. So the data memory is a volatile memory. And we call them as, this memory is called random access memory. From now onwards, we will say RAM, RAM means random access memory, which is a data memory where you can store data, but when you turn off the power, it loses its data. The second type of memory is a non-volatile memory. Which, is, uh, which we call a read-only memory. Where we store the program, this is a read-only memory, and this is random access memory. So in this memory, even if you turn off the power, it will hold the information. So this is where we store our program. So in most of the computers that you will have two types of memory, one is the non-volatile memory, the other one is the volatile memory. Now we look at a bit further, what, just looking at the memory block, I've already explained this data memory and as well as a program memory there. Now we look at a central processing unit, which can be divided into two units within the central processing. One is the arithmetic logic unit, which does all the calculation that you want to do, all the logical operation, all the arithmetic operations, everything is done in there, based on the instruction that you have written in the, in the, in the um, non-volatile memory and the program memory. And then it has got a control unit which decides whether it takes the data from here or whether it takes the data from the data memory. It's all done by the control unit. So uh, a central processing unit has got these two blocks. They are all connected to each other and uh, based on the program that you have written, it operates. And later on you will see in the course you will be writing program to do all these operations. Now we look at the memory addressing. What is a memory and how do we address them? And, and you have already learned that in, a, in, in, um, in your digital course that you can have um, a, a, a couple of gates coupled together can store information as ones or zeros. So you will have uh, sequential uh, logic gates. Uh, you can think as one, two, three, many, eight gates here. They, are, they have got they are able to store information. So the memory is organized in terms of uh, rows and columns. So in this case, I've got four address lines. That means I can have altogether 16 locations. So the first address line is 0, 0, 0, 0. That's the least significant bit. So the memory is pointed to location 0, and that the data is in these positions, and we call this is D, D node as, we call them as bit 0, and D7 as bit 7. And then if you change the address to 0, 0, 001, we are pointing these locations, and the data comes out from those locations. And if you point the address to those, 111, one, one, we are pointing the last, last locations now, and this data will come out. If you want to get the data out of the memory, there's a control pin, which is called read-write pin. If the read is at high, 
you will have read lines at high, you will have to read the data. And if you make it low, at the transition, it will write the data. So you can write data into the memory or you can read. So that's normally the random access memory we normally have. We can write and read. Similarly, read-only memory as well. Random access memory, you can, when, when you turn off the power, uh, it loses this information. So when I'm addressing that position, the data from here come through this and it's available to us. And if you have got four bit addressing, that means in this case we only have four, A0, A1, A2, A3, then you can have 16 memory locations. And if you have 16 bit addressing, and then you've got two to the power 16 minus one memory location. So, you know, it's, the memory is very, very big. Now we move on to the next part, where different types of memory. I've already mentioned about read-only memory, then programmable read-only memory, then erasable programmable read-only memory, and then electrically erasable programmable read-only memory. This is the sequence in which memory was developed. And read-only memory is normally programmed at, at the factory. So it's, it's fabricated by the manufacturer, based on the data that you have provided to them and it's being already stored. So the memory comes with everything stored. You cannot never modify that. And the second memory is PROM, programmable read-only memory. So the, the manufacturer supplies the memory to you and there are fusible links in there and you burn those links. And so the series of fuses there and you burn those links. Once you have burned it, it's permanent. You cannot erase them. That's why it's called program. You can program it, but once you have programmed it, you cannot change it. So that's called programmable read-only memory. So normally we can use a device like this available. We put in these are programmable read-only memory. We put the chip in there and through a small uh, 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 throw in the computer, you can write data out of it. Let's look at the next type of memory. Erasable programmable memory, that's the next level memory came into market, where you will see erasable program memory, there will be a small opening window there. You can erase them by ultraviolet. So these, these memories are recognizable by the transparent window on the top of the package. As soon as you see this one, you know it's an erasable programmable memory. And by exposing ultraviolet, you, you basically uh, wipe the data. And then you can reprogram it. And then if you want to wipe it again, you pass it through ultraviolet. So that, this, this is another type of memory available. Again, the difficulty with this one, you're going to take the chip out, put it in the ultraviolet, then put them back and rewrite them. So manufacturers then came up with the next type of memory, which is you don't take them out. It is electrically erasable, this, which is called EEPROM, electrical erasable. You can see this one, you can write the data in there, and you can erase it as well electrically. So that's called electrically erasable uh, program. But once you have written it, even if you turn off the power, it will hold the information. It's not like random access memory. When you turn off the power, it loses the information. Here, electrically, you can write it in. Even if you turn off the power, it will hold the information. When then turn on the power again, and then if you want to erase it, you can send electric pulses to erase it. So that's the next type of memory. Let's move on to the next type, which is the recent ones, which we call them the flash memory. And flash memory is like is a special form of EE from when we are when we are erasing something on the electrical erasable from we do bit by bit we erase them bit by bit but flash memory you erase them as a block of data at a time and you will find all the USB devices has got flash memory there's flash memory flash memory in all the USB devices. And, uh, and which is very, very popular in, and they, they can be manufactured so small, and so the USBs really become very, very small. You can have a bigger one or smaller one, but you can manufacture them accordingly. And also you can pack a lot of data. I mean, you know, latest ones have got 6,428 gigabytes of data is in a small device. That's flash memory. Now, we've covered just basic idea of memories 
And we will look at them later on when we actually write program. Now we look at the architecture. So we have got one Newman architecture, Harvard architecture. What is the difference between those two architecture? Let's look at the one Newman architecture. And you will find here you've got one address bus, one data bus. So what does that mean? You could only address that one at a time, or that one, or that one. You cannot address all three at a time, because it's just got only one address bus and one data bus. So the system is very slow, because you can do, if you want to pick something here, you've got to go there. And if you want to pick that simultaneously, you can't do it. So that's the uh, disadvantage of um, one Newman architecture. So the structure becomes inefficient, actually. So when you, when you start to implement things, and you can't, it's not in high speed as well, structure is very inefficient. So the next structure, which is the, the hard architecture, it has got two address bus and two data bus. So whenever it wants to program memory, it uses one set of address and take the data immediately, the program. And whenever it wants to take data, it uses the end of the set of address. And so these can operate in parallel. So it's faster, you know, and it's efficient as well. And these memory can be different size. These can be different size, different address, addresses. This could be, you know, 16 bit, and this could be 8 bit, you know, address. Data are normally 8-bit data, or 16-bit data, or 32-bit data, or 64-bit data. That's the number of bytes, the amount that you can store. But the address could be any length. So the memory is like this, right? So if you let this one, that's 8-bit data. That's the data that you are storing. And these are locations. And this could be, you know, one millionth position. So this is the memory size, like as you go this way, the addresses are, you know, going this way, and data is only 8-bit data. So that's normally the size of the memory. If you say the size of the memory is, you know, 12K uh, memory, that means 12,000 address lines in there, and then 12K by 8 means it, the data is 8-bit. So most of the structure that you will see are this sort of a structure nowadays, the Harvard architecture, because faster, it's efficient, you can do parallel processing. Let's look at microcontroller applications. Now, that's what this chapter is leading to you, eventually. So, where are we going to use all these architectures, all these? And is what we are going to learn is about microcontroller. Microcontroller is a single chip, what it can do. So one of the projects that we did a couple of years ago for microcontroller is you have a microcontroller here connected to a computer. And we've got interface connected by students. This is an FM radio. You can actually write program to tune the radio. There's a radio chip there. And they program it. And they can use keypad to key in the frequency of the station that you want. And that can be displayed here as well, you can see. At the same time, you can listen to it as well. So it's a, it's a, it's a very, very good um, project where you have a microcontroller, um, a, a computer. Say it for the moment, it's a computer. Later on, I'll explain what is a microcontroller. A small computer to do all of these jobs. So in a washing machine, you will find a small microcontroller, small chip in there. And uh, the washing machine, so that's one chip in there. And the washing machine has a keypad, a display, and it measures the water level, measures the temperature, and sends signal to heat the water, and it sends signal to um, start the pump, and then the drum, and, and, and it, this is whole thing is motor control, and then the water out. So all are checked by a, a program written to do all, this, uh, uh, all these cycles. So that's again, you will find a microcontroller in there. In FM radio, in car radio, you will find a, a small microcontroller chip, which is a computer. And in this um, washing machine, you have a chip. And you, you know, at houses, you have got solar, um, solar cells, and then, and that's also have a microcontroller chip. And that does all the control. It just look at the solar panel output and the temperature. It just sends a temperature, and then the output of that DC to DC converter module is controlled by that. DC to AC module is controlled by the microcontroller. 
almost all the job is done by microcontrol and battery storage. Once it's stored, whether it has got enough signal, enough um, charge, all checked by microcontroller. So, whole, so, so everywhere now you go, there's no application without a small microcontroller in it. So you will ask a question, what's a microcontroller? A microcontroller has got program memory, data memory, input output, control unit, everything is in one chip. Earlier we learned modules, separate modules. Memory is outside, uh, input output is outside. Now microcontroller consists of everything. So I've just explained this uh, basic chapter about, about um, basic introduction to computer. I've given you some exercise. You can just uh, run through this exercise and try to do this. This is a very good exercise and see whether you understand uh, what I've explained to you. Thank you. We'll move on to chapter, uh, the next chapter, chapter 1B. And uh, the reference I've used for this particular um, uh, chapters are these are the two references. And then and there I'll be using the websites, uh, various websites to pick and choose some diagrams, uh, uh, some um, pictures uh, to illustrate, uh, in order to illustrate the idea better. And there's a book available as well. There's no need for you to buy any of these books. And uh, basically, information is available already as a recorded form. Plus, there are plenty of resource materials on the web as well.